everybody, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms, and today, <laughs> oh man, today we got an interesting one. This is a front brake caliper. Now, you might have a front brake caliper that looks a little different than this, but the function and form of these things is all going to be extremely similar. So this is transferable to just about any car made from the time that disc brakes were invented all the way up through the most modern car you can think of. As long as it's not an electric brake system, if it's just a hydraulic brake system, which 99.5% of all cars on the road are, then this will be the same. So what we're going to be doing today is rebuilding a brake caliper. And I'm titling this video The Forgotten Art of Rebuilding Brake Calipers because hardly anyone does this anymore. Brake calipers, they now come from China. They're usually almost so cheap that it's not worth the effort to rebuild. However, if you have more money than time, that's a great way to go. If you're like me and have a little bit more time than money, well, you can get this kit for usually about 7 or $8, where a caliper is going to run you anywhere from about 45 all the way up to about 250 So as you can see, oh boy, that's a big difference. Now, it's a messy job. It's a dirty job. I didn't show how to take this off the car because it's going to differ a little bit on uh, your make and model. Obviously, if you're even considering rebuilding a caliper, I'm going to imagine that you have the technical skills required to remove a caliper safely from your car. But let's just talk about why this one failed, and that's this. This is the dust boot or O-ring, dust ring, that goes on these calipers, and it's shredded. There was hardly anything left. Once that fails, it allows water and then, of course, rust to form on the actual puck, and that's what this centerpiece here is. It's called a puck. And once that happens, it creates damage. So you've got either one of two things will happen. The puck will seize inside of the sleeve, which is what happened with this one, or in a worst case scenario, the puck continues to move in and out, but as all that dust and debris gets in there, it acts as an abrasive, and the inner seal here fails, causing brake fluid to leak past it. Either one of those is a bad situation. A locked up brake will give that burning, smoking smell. The car might pull one direction or the other, and a leaking one will cause you to have no brakes at all, which is also really bad. Now, there are two ways to go about getting this puck out from inside the brake cylinder. The easy way is to leave this on the car, remove the caliper, leave it dangling, but leave the hose still hooked up, and then you just pump your brakes. And every time you pump it, this will come out ever so slightly until finally it pops out. The negative to that is it does tend to make quite a mess, and you lose a lot of brake fluid in the process. In this case, I have the access to an air compressor, so I'm going to use an air compressor and an air blast through this hole right here, which is where the brake fluid normally goes, and that air pressure will force this puck out. And once that's done, we'll clean up the area, and then we will go about reinstalling everything. Now the kit you're going to get might look a little different. Some of these are going to be dual pucks, or some are even four pucks like Toyota trucks. But you're going to have your inner O-ring, that's what sits in here, and that protects, that keeps the fluid from passing through. And then you have your dust boot, which is what failed on ours. And uh, yeah, here's what that one looks like. It's totally trashed. So the, both those will end up getting replaced. Now, your kid, again, might have more or less than these parts, or it may have two O-rings. So I've seen that a few times. But in general, it's going to be the same thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a wire brush and some brake cleaner. I'm going to clean as much of this off as I can before I go ahead and remove it. Once I remove it, I'll take a look at the damage to the inside. If it's salvageable, we'll continue. Okay, as you can see, I've cleaned this up. You know, it doesn't have to be spotless, but you want to get the, as much of this debris as you can. You don't want any of that trash getting in there when we go to reassemble this. So I've scrubbed it down. You can see the wire brush marks. and It's pretty well clean at this point. Clean enough anyway that I feel comfortable going ahead. Now this next part, I'm going to take air pressure from here, and I'm going to use it and apply it there, and this puck is going to come out. Now it may leave forcefully. For that sake, I am not going to film this because I can't afford to break this camera. I'm going to put it on the floor, and I'm going to do this on the floor with my foot over it, so you wouldn't be able to see it even if I tried to film it. But the next step will be to get that out. Now, if for some reason you tried the compressor method and you can't blow this out with compressed air, don't worry, it's not over yet. You just go ahead, reinstall. You don't have to put it all the way back on, but you go ahead and rethread that, empty your bleeder. You'll have to bleed your brake. Once it's bled, tighten the bleeder down and use the foot pedal method, and you can pop it out that way. A little more messy, but it does work. It, you know, 400 pounds of uh, foot pressure versus about 100, maybe 80 to 100 PSI of pressure. So sometimes if it's super seized, and this one might be, it's very difficult to get these out. And here we go. Got it out of here. 
uh, it was definitely seized in there and you can kind of see why. So the dust boot goes around this lip right here and since it failed, and I don't know, hopefully you can see that on the camera, those are little rust pittings right there. So when I went to install a new set of brake pads, it contracted all the way back into place, but then it jammed, it was stuck on that. So that's a problem. And not only that, but also from neglect, and this is why mechanics will recommend you change your brake fluid every 30 to 60,000 miles. I don't know, I'm probably making it worse than... Look at the crud down in there. You see that? So that's some rust and some pitting and some just garbage. So all that needs to get cleaned out. And you can also see there's the O-ring right along that edge there. So you'll take a pick, you go ahead and remove the O-ring, but you don't want to insert the new O-ring yet because we want to clean that up. And that means taking like a, either an emery cloth or a, um, well, I'll show you. Hold on one second. What you're going to want is something like this, a you know, Brillo pad type material. It's, it's got some abrasive uh, characteristics to it, but it would take an awful lot of work to actually change the thickness of, of the aluminum here or magnesium, whatever that is, and the steel there. So you're just going to clean all the pitting off with that, and uh, that and the pick, and we're all set. And I've got a pick like this. This is like a dental pick, but, you know, there's automotive picks that are very similar to this. I have quite a few of them. But you just want something that's going to be able to reach in here, grab that, and pull it out. And there it is. And boy, you know, surprisingly, <laughs> it's still soft. It's just pretty amazing for 30, 30 years old, 33 years old, something like that. So I'm going to take this and I'll go to work and just kind of clean these surfaces up as best I can. Get that pitting off, get the rust off. And we'll see how bad the damage is when I'm done. Uh, you know, sometimes they have so much pitting that they really can't be reused. This doesn't seem too terribly thick, just, just enough to have caused it to bind up. I'm going to go ahead and clean these surfaces and take as long or as little time as this is required to do it. But, you know, once you put this thing together, if it seizes up again, you're pretty well stuck with what you got. Yeah, I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera. It's... It's better, but I still feel it ever so slightly, so we'll work at it some more. Okay, that's about as good as it's going to get. You can still see the visible discoloration in the steel, but now, when you put your finger across there, it's smooth. You don't feel any rough edges, and that's a good indication that you should be all right, because if you have a nice smooth edge, there's nothing for that to catch on that seal as this goes up and down on the seal. So we'll set that aside, and we're going to give this the same treatment because it's, it's pretty ugly in there. First, I'm just going to clean it out with some brake cleaner, and then I'll give it the old sanding treatment. All right, here we are back. Both our parts are cleaned up. Now you can see. Uh, look at the reflection in there now. And uh, took some extra care and time to clean out that O-ring channel because it gets corroded because it's where the two chemicals meet. You're going to have water, air, salt, whatever. Everything's going to be coming from one side, brake fluid, and whatever contamination is coming in from the back side as well. So, uh, got that cleaned up. Again, I've polished that as, about as, as good as I'm going to be able to get it. I don't feel anything. So, it's time for reassembly. Now, <laughs> reassembly, isn't that grand? Let me grab a rag. Now, to put this thing back together, again, it gets a little weird because everything is supposed to be a super tight fit. I've got brake fluid, dot four brake fluid, just regular old good old stuff there, right? And it's a sealed container. We're going to open that up. You want to make sure that you don't have an open container of brake fluid sitting around for... 10 years or so because uh, it tends to attract moisture. It's just the nature of the chemical. Now, the O-ring, as far as going into this groove, that's just a matter of sliding it in there, trying to get it to fit back in that hole. And usually they'll kind of pop in there, but sometimes they'll give you trouble. I might have to get this closer to me than the camera, but uh, get in there. I'm trying to do this on film. There we go. There we go. Come on now. <laughs> like I said, it's a dance. Okay, can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. The O-ring is back in there. Now that's going to stick out a little bit. The only thing you want to use to lubricate this job while you're doing it is the brake fluid. So you can put just a little splash in there. Use your finger and kind of swish that around that O-ring because you've got to get that puck to slide back through there. If you can't get it in, then you got problems. And I'm going to do the same thing here. 
I'm going to take a couple fingerfuls here, reach in there. I'm just going to put some oil, well, some brake fluid on this surface here so it helps slide. I don't want anything to catch, tear that O-ring or have it roll back. Okay? And we come to the fun part, sliding it back into place. Now, it's a tight fit. And if it gets cockeyed, and it almost always immediately does, it becomes pretty hard to get in there. But if you can keep it straight, you can get it down in there. Everybody's got an old school trick for doing this, but eventually it will go. It just has to get past that groove. After a lot of struggle, as you can see, I've got this all the way in. And I actually should have left that out just a smidge because it makes it easier to put the last piece on, but it's still possible to do it without it. And that just is involving. This is gonna. This inner groove will end up down there in that groove, which is just out of sight now, but it's still uh, exposed. And this piece here will fit into the outer ring. If you've done everything right, once this is back together, and, and again, it would have been a lot easier if I had left it out a little bit. But uh, once you get this back together again, you reinstall the caliper and bleed it as you would a new one. And that requires either a tool or two people to take care of. And you are back in business. There we go. The struggle is real, my friends, but victory is still within grasp. Hey, hey, one little corner back there. There it goes. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done it that way where it's been all the way back, but it works. Ta-da! One rebuilt caliper. Cost me $7.99 with free shipping. Took the time to clean it up nicely. Reinstall this, bleed it, and I'm back on the road. That is it. I just showed you the lost art of rebuilding brake calipers. That's the part that usually goes bad, and that's the other part that usually goes bad. This will cause the caliper to seize. That will cause the caliper to leak. I am Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the beautiful mountains of North Carolina. And that's it for today. Take care. Something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Freedom is mighty sweet. Liberty sows its seed.